So the two trips are almost identically the same, except um, base camp is an 18 day trip with 13 days of uh, hiking. And it's a trek, um, so you're, you know, you guys have all been walking for several years now. You just gotta walk um, all the way into base camp and back out again. And then Island Peak is a separate um, a mountain or peak, trekking peak, it's 6,189 meters. And that you add on an extra five days to do, um, it's a 23 day trip. And it's absolutely stunning. This shot here, guys, um, and I actually took this picture myself, it's totally awesome. This is just at the, the <laughs> The, the view, sorry, I didn't mean to blow my own trumpet there. Um, this is a, the Climbers uh, Memorial just outside uh, Leboche, and this is um, a peak called Ame de Blam. It's one of the most uh, beautiful mountains in the world. It's got that perfect cone shape. And um, the, it's just absolutely stunning. Like you see so many huge mountains and you get immersed in the uh, Sherpa culture, staying in tea houses every night. Um, it's just an absolutely fabulous place to, 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 to visit. So anyway, getting into it guys, we, um, as I mentioned, we're a fully licensed company, so we include international flights from Ireland. So we fly um, with Qatar via Doha from Dublin to Doha and then into Kathmandu. It's an overnight flight and we stay in a region of uh, Kathmandu called Tamil. And then the following morning, um, we get there on day two, and then the following morning on day three, we take a, a 14 seater uh, plane out to um, the regional airport in the Kumbu region called Lukla. Has anyone been to Lukla taking this flight before? Some of you have, absolutely. Okay, so guys, I won't sugarcoat it for you, right? If you're a confident flyer, you'll have absolutely no problems. If you're a nervous flyer, you mightn't like it that much because the planes are kind of small, you know? But uh, it's, uh, if, if you do like your flying, it's a really great experience. And uh, my top tip is if there's turbulence, which there can be, if you look up into the cockpit and the the, dri the drivers, the pilots, they're texting and all that kind of thing, everything is grand. <laughs> if they're holding on to the controls, white knuckle, then you can, you've reason to panic, okay? And so that's uh, on day three. And then the, the next day, I'm sorry guys, I'll tell you when, when we break off for Island Peak, everything is the same so far. The, the first um, two, two days on the trail, we actually, from Lukla, we descend about five hours to Falding, and then we hike for about eight hours up to Namsha Bazaar. Um, which is the Sherpa capital in the region. It's the big uh, market town and it's a really beautiful all this section You know, you're going through pine forest following the Bodakozi River and you cross uh, uh, Some huge suspension bridges absolutely stunning and you pass your villages. It's really really nice um, and the bridges um, Anybody afraid focusing on the negative here is guys, but anybody afraid of heights or big drop-offs or anything like that some people Okay, so on the base camp trek, this is the thing that, that, that um, this bridge here, it's about 200 meters off the ground, okay? But you can see from this shot, it's really solid. It's not a rope bridge. There's really strong steel cables going through it, but it does move a little bit when you're on it, okay? So um, normally when someone is really struggling, what we do is get them to hold on to your, your bag and we just kind of hoosh you across and it's over before you know it. But there's the, the trek into base camp. This is the thing that causes people um, a little bit of bother, but it's few few people that it does um, give hassle to, basically. And this is uh, inside the tea house in Falding. You can see here this gentleman is having an absolutely amazing time when he's tripped at Earth's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, people focus on what you, you see on the hikes and all the different views, but a lot of it is guys is getting into the tea house and just having the crack with like-minded people and chatting to the Sherpas. Unfortunately, um, or fortunately, depending on your outlook, there's, there's internet connectivity the entire way up um, uh, to, to base camp and back. So you will find that thing you have in Ireland where you're trying to have a conversation with someone and they've got their head in their phone. But if you've got good discipline, you'll leave the phone behind you. And you're just ordering off the, the menu here. It's absolutely fantastic food and just having fun and, and, and messing really. Um, this is Namsha Bazaar. So when we get there, we take, a, we take a full rest day here. So we also do a kit check for you guys, making sure you have everything you need for higher up the, the valley. Um, as it gets colder and uh, we go and see the um, Sherpa Museum and take an acclimatization hike higher up the, the, the hillside just to get you guys prepared for the, for the higher elevation. Um, so the next um, kind of four or five days brings us up to Leboche, which is where we, uh, from there, we trek to Everest Base Camp. This is kind of the mid, mid part of, of the trek. 
and it's really, really beautiful. It's, this is a shot of uh, Dingboche. Um, Amit Blan, that peak I just showed you earlier on, is, is off to the, to the left, left shot, um, to the left of camera here. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, you're just kind of cruising up, you, you, depending on what time, if you're there in spring, you've got rhododendron in flower, um, and autumn they're not in flower, but it's just stunning, guys. I can't recommend it enough. Um, and the village is really nice. Pretty typically, we'll stop. Um, we stop in one village for lunch, and then continue on to the tea house that we're staying the night in that evening. So you get plenty of time in the villages and plenty of time out in the the wilder places as well. Um, yeah, this is just a shot of the team. Uh, I was there in 2016. Um, this is a, a Pomori, it's a 7,000 meter peak just beside Everest. Everest is out of shot here. Um, it's really beautiful. Yeah, some more photos. Just to give you guys an idea of the terrain. Um, obviously, the higher we go up into the valley, the less vegetation there is. And um, you see some really interesting thing, guys, that the route, um, unlike something like Kilimanjaro where you're in a national park, the, the, the route up this valley, it's actually people are living up there um, all year round. So you see people carrying building materials. It's incredible the, the amount of weight and, and size of objects that the Sherpas can carry. They're, they're phenomenal people. Um, okay, so the next, next kind of uh, two days is going to Everest Base Camp itself. So from Leboche, we um, hike to a place called um, Gorak Shep for lunch. And then we hike all the way into Everest Base Camp. Um, where you, um, we just, there's a, there's a big kind of um, um, collection of uh, prayer flags where we take some photos there, you actually achieved your goal. And then we come back out and spend the night in Gorak Shep. And the next day then we go up to a little peak. Um, it's big enough actually, it's five and a half thousand meters, but and in the context of everything else, it's kind of small. Um, we climb up there very early in the morning the, the following day. Um, and then from there, we descend all the way back to a place called Fariche. And the reason we go to Kalabatar is because when you go into base camp, you can't actually see Everest from there because you're too close to the mountain. But when you um, get to Kalabatar, you get great views of, of Everest. And you, we go up there very early in the morning for sunrise. So this is on the way up to base camp itself. And this is in base camp. Um, yeah, this is the shot of my team in base camp. And this is Kalabatar, the peak I was talking about. Yeah, and then um, the, the opening shot, guys, I'll show it to you again, is the actual picture of uh, Everest from Calvatar. Um, so from um, when we descend from base camp, we then spend another um, four days walking from there back to Lukla. And um, the itinerary that we have on uh, going into base camp, we take we use some different villages on the way up than we on the way down, but effectively we follow the same route all the way back down. Okay, so you come all the way through Tengboche, back into Namsha, back to um, Falding, and then out to Lukla. Um, yeah, but it's really, really stunning. And then from, from Lukla, we fly down to Kathmandu. We spend a night there. We have dinner in Kathmandu. We take you guys out for dinner. And then the following day, we board a flight um, via Doha back to Dublin. Okay, so that's the right dinner. Um, yeah, and this is dinner back in Kathmandu. And then, okay, so those of you guys that are interested in Island Peak, um we when we come back from um Everest Base Camp itself, we go back to a place called Dingboche. We take a rest and skills day there. So what we do is um on the way up, if you guys are bringing your own climbing equipment for the mountain, we leave it there. Otherwise we rent it from Dingboche if you need, because for Island Peak it's it's a although it's not a technical peak per se, you do need to use crampons, ice axe, um, rope. So we spend a day just to rest there after going to base camp then practice those skills. Um, and then the following day, we walk into uh, Chukung, which is the last tea house um, on the way up to Island Peak. And then from there, we have um, a base camp at uh, 5,000 meters and then a high camp at five and a half. And then from the five and a half thousand meter high camp, it's a 14 hour day up to the top of Island Peak and uh, back down all the way to Chukung again. Okay, so, um, and it's an absolutely stunning, stunning uh, mountain. Um, as I said, you're breaking that 6,000 meter uh, barrier and you get stunning views of the um, Lotse face, one of the, um, the 8,000 meter peaks and also back down towards Amit Blam. It's really, really beautiful. Um, so this is the route guys, the upper part of the mountain. So you can see the climbers coming in here and then they just um, 
move their way up through on the glacier and then they climb this head wall here which there's a fixed rope all the way there and then from there this fixed line all the way up onto the summit and um, this is a shot of our team just last october doing some training um outside dingboche just getting you guys used to the to the rope systems you're using in nepal so we do recommend um if you get the opportunity to practice, if you can go out for a day of rock climbing and specifically um, abseiling or rappelling ahead of this trip, it's definitely beneficial, but it's it's not um, absolutely essential. We would recommend that you have experience over, to do Island Peak, you've experienced over 5,000 meters already. Um, with base camp, you can go out and try to have a crack at that really without any experience at all. Um, but yeah, Island Peak, it's preferable to have some high altitude experience. And um, people ask us about the technical element of um, Island Peaks. As I said, it's not considered a, a technical mountain, but there are some sections where there are crevasses, which is basically, without getting boring you guys with detail, it's holes in the ice. So where they are there, there's uh, fixed ladders in place and fixed lines, so it's, they are manageable. But again, a little bit like my story about the rope bridge, if you don't like, um, climbing climbing across uh, uh, what like just big empty gasping spaces then uh, maybe <laughs> just stick with base camp but it, it is very very safe um, this is another shot of the head wall here guys um, yeah and then this if you can imagine this shot here is taken from summit looking back down um, this is the route here up onto the head wall and this is Amanda Blam here guys and the Lotse faces off to your right and Everest you can't see Everest from the top of Island Peak um and then up onto the summit and this fixed line the whole way up here um yeah that's our team on the top okay so typical day on the track um a little bit more typical day in ever space camp a typical day on island peak are a little bit different you know because you're roped up in one and you're not in the other but basically the great thing about this trip guys and any of our treks is the simplicity of it so you get up in the morning and uh, you have your breakfast in a tea house it's absolutely fab. You know, you're staying um, in uh, you're staying in uninsulated freezing cold rooms. But when you come out into the main kind of hall in the tea house, there's a stove. You can just see the edge of it here, and they they um, they burn uh, dried yak poo in that, and it's it's really really nice the heat. And then you you can order off the menu. So for breakfast, you might be having like eggs or porridge or muesli or basically. Um, whatever you'd like off the menu. I was going to say whatever you want, but they don't do uh, uh, poached eggs and smashed avocado or anything like that yet in Nepal. They probably will soon. Um, and then we start walking, guys. We get filled up with water. You walk for about, um, average walk time at base camp is probably um, five to seven hours per day. Um, so we walk to lunch. We, we get into another tea house. We have tea, we have lunch, and then we keep walking for the afternoon. Then you might get to some of the places they have uh, German bakeries, which is, they're, I don't know why they're all called German bakeries, but they're just bakeries and you've got really good cake. You're going to be um, burning a lot of energy. So it's important to eat the cake and sweets. It's very, very, it's, it's essential. Um, this is the monastery in Tengboche. So it's the, the biggest monastery in the region. So on, on the day we get there, we get to go explore that in the afternoon and you're hanging out in the tea house. And then you get to stop and um, as I mentioned, we have an Irish um, expedition leader and doctor, but we also have Sherpas working in all of our climbs and you get to meet local people all the way up, which is really a fantastic experience. The Nepalis are uh, fantastic people. They're so friendly and nice. Um, and this is um, what the inside of your room in a tea house would look like, okay? And guys, this is a really nice room, all right? <laughs> this is like as good as it gets, you know? Uh, so you can see there's blankets here and pillows and there's a mattress but you need to bring a good sleeping bag i'll talk to you guys about um sleeping bags in a second in gear <coughs> but generally speaking the rooms are damp and cold okay so just so you're aware of that don't be expecting like five star treatment they're really really nice to be honest but it's important for us to manage expectations um and it's a fully supported expedition so in um in Nepal, you have, uh, sometimes we use Sherpas, so, so basically men to carry the bags. Sometimes we use yaks, and but commonly we use zokas, which are a cross between a yak and, uh, and a cow. Because uh, the yaks only work above 3,000 meters, so the starting point of our trek is below that. So we like to use the same beast all the way through, so we use a zoka. Very, very good. And they carry the bulkier gear. So they're gonna carry up to 15 kg of your luggage in a duffel bag, 
and then the rest of the stuff what you need each day you're going to carry in a, in a 30 liter backpack okay um, and we include all the all the food on the trek is is included um, yeah this is, this is my birthday here last time i was there so i was having a, I was a quite a big team so we had two cakes it was great um so guys um one of the most important things um you guys need to be thinking about for um going to any trip to altitude and we'll talk about ever space camp specifically is that you have enough um days in the itinerary to acclimatize so an 18 day trip um, including flights from ireland is ideal for base camp or for island peak 23 days that gives you a rest day and a spare summer day for for island peak it's enough time because that is the same single most important thing with acclimatization that you have enough time to adjust to the altitude um it's really really essential you see people trying to do this trip at base camp in 14 or 15 days and you either won't make it or you'll suffer a lot so you might as well take the time you you, you won't regret it and um, so acute mountain sickness just to cover it uh very quickly guys i can take questions at the end if you want basically the higher you go into the atmosphere the thinner the air is the harder it is for you to function and um it's very very manageable and if you um conduct yourself in a the correct manner it's unlikely that you're going to suffer from altitude sickness it's typical to get a headache at when you get to base camp um, or the higher higher elevations but it's unusual for people to suffer um, more than that if they um, if they acclimatize properly so as i touched on already you need to have enough days in your itinerary um, the second thing is you need to walk at a very slow pace throughout your trip um, so walk really slow it's that simple you need to drink tons of water like four to six liters of water a day um and then um also you need to sleep really well and eat really well okay eat lots yeah try and put on weight if you can and then um I will, i'm going to send you out an information pack um uh, after tomorrow actually i'm going to send it to you but the other option that we'd recommend is you take a preventative drug called um, diamox which will reduce the chances of you guys getting altitude sickness okay if you want more information on that guys i can get into it with you but um I'd advise you against doing a lot of research yourself. Well, you obviously do research yourself, but you can really scare yourself like any kind of ail ailment or illness if you do a lot of research on the internet, because if it's not treated or you're not managed properly, it can get quite serious. But if you if you just focus on the preventatives, you, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, weather, yeah. Um, so Calabatar can be pretty cold. Island Peak, if you get a little lick of wind, it can be really, really cold. Um, but again, I'm gonna send you guys out a gear list tomorrow. I'll talk to you about gear. You have the right gear um you're protecting yourself problem properly it's very manageable uh your fitness and training guys so um for um ever space camp um who here is like actively hill walking lots of you guys some of you are probably you know doing none you know but that's the best indication i can give you guys so if you're comfortable to walk on the irish hills um for six to seven hours uh, two days in a row, so on a Saturday and then a Sunday, um, at a slow pace with AKG in your back, um, you're probably going to be fit enough for Everest Space Camp. That's a good indication. For Island Peak, tack a few hours onto both those days. But the fitter you are, the more you'll enjoy it. Okay, so we people that travel with us and they're just on the edge of their fitness they should be and they spend their whole time looking at the ground, puffing and panting where you could be looking up and taking in all the views of these amazing mountains. So the fitter you are, the more you'll enjoy it. Um, it's kind of hard to go out hiking at the moment because the, the, you guys are just coming from outside. It's absolutely brutal out there. Uh, myself and Connor are just back from Kilimanjaro uh, last week and I swear it's colder out there today than it is in Top Kili. It's freezing, you know. But uh, get out and do whatever you can on the weekend. Um, get into the gym. Just build your cardio and strength. You know, like uh, resistance training will help. Anything like running, cycling, swimming. Try and cross train. So do different activities to avoid injury. And if you have any um, injury or a sore knee or a dodgy hip that hurts kind of going down the steps here, it's obviously going to hurt like hell if you do a 13 or 18 day trip. So look after yourself and get your training up. Um, you don't need to be, if you're planning this trip um, at base camp, I'll show you guys dates we have. It's a spring or, or autumn trip. If you're planning on going in September or October uh, this year, you, you, you could go from zero to, to hero and do the trek now if you if you put a good training program together you'll be you'll be well fit enough it's endurance fitness guys um you just need to have to keep going at a slow pace um for for up to 12 hours yeah i've heard that uh, people who are very fit actually get very quickly get very bad uh, and it's actually 
Is that because they're trying to go too fast? So yeah, it, it, what's, because they're physically their legs can do it, but their lungs aren't yeah in, in my experience it's uh, young fit males have the most trouble with um, altitude sickness because as a demographic they're uh, the hardest and most indestructible people um, around you know and they're the fittest and they're strongest so what happens on those first few days when you're asking them to walk like an old man um, they don't like doing that they want it they've got something to prove so um, that's probably a similar kind of thing that you have so it's definitely on the start of one of these trips to altitude it's very important to kind of almost uh, physically keep your powder dry and take it nice and easy and then when you get to the to the higher areas like your summit day or the day you're going to Kalapatar, that's when you can um, push yourself a bit more even though you're still going to be going very very slow you know um, but yeah anyway I'll keep going guys and I'll take questions at the end. Um, so this picture was not taken on either of these trips. Um, base camp is a trek guys, you know, just one foot in front of the other the whole way. On um, Island Peak, we are using crampons, you are roped up, but there's nothing technical, you know, you're not going over any hard ground. There's a couple of places where we're using ladders, um, where you're going up maybe a 60 degree slope but it's very, very straightforward. You're gonna be clipped in using a Jumar and a sender. I won't get into the detail. You don't need to be, um, you don't have to have a, a technical knowledge of mountaineering or ice climbing or anything like that, okay? You need to be able to walk, it's important. You guys know about that. The next thing guys, including included in all our packages, we do um, pre-departure weekends in, in Glendalough and Wicklow. Um, two months before departure. So what will happen is you'll meet one of our expedition leaders and a doctor. Um, they'll go through a full brief on the expedition. They'll show you their equipment. If you have any equipment you're not sure it's suitable, you bring it along, they'll check that for you. And then they go out in two, um, two good solid hikes and we'll be able to give you guys um, feedback on your fitness. It's not a fitness test. Don't stress about going to this thing. No one's gonna make you do a bleep test or anything and you get to just meet other people that you're going with you on your trek and if you meet someone you like you know you can decide to share with them all our um, packages are based on twin sharing so we'll share you will pair you up with someone uh, of the same gender or if you're traveling with your partner you guys can share so at that weekend if you meet someone that you kind of half like you should maybe you know hedge your bets and say yeah, i'm going to share with that person or equally you know if you meet someone the weekend you really don't like you can email Joyce and tell her like don't put me in with that person <laughs> but uh, they're really good fun um, and people tend to go for a beer a couple of beers on, on the Saturday night and then go hiking again the next day so that's something that's really really handy and it, we really like everyone to attend those uh, weekends they're included as I said because it just gives us an opportunity to soak some more information into you guys prepare your property for the expedition um, yeah and as I touched guys the best thing about these trips is just to go away with like-minded people um in this case um hang out with a um a, lots of nepali sherpas who are absolutely phenomenal people i'm um, in every way they're really really friendly and super strong um this is uh dawa he's working for the last couple of years this guy here is shira he's one of our porters he's got very um little english but he's a really nice guy he's got five ascents on everest itself so in regard to when the best time to go to um everest base camp is uh, Nepal is a northern hemisphere country like Ireland so their seasons are similar to ours but they're a lot more stable than ours as you guys can imagine and um, so their summer is is very very hot and monsoon so it's not a good time to go and obviously with the elevations that we're going to their winter it's too cold up there and you get too much snow so the season for um, base camp is uh, March April and uh, May and then into the start of June and then September, October, November. Okay. Um, I think um, it's very subjective of when the best time to go is. If you go in uh, April or May, the, there's climbers actually climbing the mountain. So you, when you get to base camp, you'll see in the distance a lot of tents um, of, of the base camp. There's actually people, excuse me, climbing the mountain. So if that's something that interests you, you could go then. Um, if you go in the in autumn, the mountain nobody's climbing the mountain because the weather on the upper mountain is a little bit more unstable. Um, so the, the advantage of that is it's less busy. There's less people in base camp. Um, so October is high season um, for base camp. Um, September for me, to be honest, like is slightly better because there's less people there. Okay, but it's entirely up to you guys. I would say go at a time that suits you. Um, but not summer and winter, okay?